In order to do an authentic Dino dog bark, okay. you have to inhale. Like that. Can you give it a shot? I may never be the leading man in a romantic comedy, but I could play one in a cartoon, you know? If, if my voice is there and, and my, my acting is there, you know, it, it'll work. I just hope I don't get canceled for not being a real rabbit uh, for Bugs Bunny. What's up, Doc? Eric Bowser, the first time I heard about you was from Jay Oliva of um, Tresse on Netflix. Yes. He came on the show and he was talking about Tresse, talking about casting, and he said there was one voice where he listened and he wanted to hire that voice for this character and another character and another character, and then somebody said, but that's one person, that's Eric Bowser. And that's the first time I heard about you, and I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to get an interview with this guy. And then shortly after, Space Jam, mm -hmm. and then I started seeing you. That's Eric Bowser. That's voiceover, right? That's the ability of playing multiple characters behind the microphone without anyone knowing if it's one person or five people. And uh, I've, I'm just lucky, I guess. Is it a talent that you were born with or a skill that you've had to nurture? I think the, the later, a skill that you nurtured because every kid runs around the house and does funny voices, right? They do characters or they think they're doing an impression of someone and they think it's good. What my parents had in their house was a karaoke machine. So there was a microphone and immediately I was intrigued by this, this machine. I could hear my own voice. What about your parents? What kind of support did they give you? Were they supportive? Well, I just, I think that they thought it was probably amusing, you know, the, I would send uh, uh, tapes back home to the Philippines saying hi to my relatives and, you know, talking about how much I love Palabok and, and all that, and Lumpia and all that stuff, and they thought it was funny. Uh, <laughs> but I don't think that they could predict that I would be doing, you know, voices like this as a living. I think maybe they thought, okay, that's, that's fun, you know, and they were very supportive. But I don't even think I, you know, I, I sit here and I go, oh my gosh, like I've, I've worked on like a lot of really cool stuff and I'm, again, super lucky, but it, it really is like winning the lottery because when you audition for something, I'm not the only person that grew up watching Bugs Bunny. There's like thousands, millions of people that have that character in their life. You know, Bugs Bunny and Tweety now too, they're 80 years old. It's like, it's like, uh, you know, our, our Lola and Lolo, you know, <laughs> they're part of our family. People will believe all kinds of toy trash. <laughs> I did not study acting in school. I always uh, loved working with cameras, audio. I was not uh, featured on the theater, uh, on the stage, as often as I was behind the scenes. But as I uh, studied, uh, and I did study that in, in college, was radio, television, and film production, uh, I loved radio. I loved being behind the microphone. And uh, I thought maybe I might work at a radio station. And then I found this uh, animation studio out in Los Angeles looking for an intern. And I was at my third year of college, so I applied to do an internship at the studio. And uh, I thought this might be a good way to get into voiceover by working at an animation studio. Tell us about um, the first time you auditioned and got a call back. What was that like? Within the animation studio, there's a point in production where they do something called uh, an animatic. So it's not fully animated. Uh, it is just the storyboard drawings with some music, some sound effects, and what we call scratch dialogue, which is temporary dialogue. They need someone who can do like voice acting, supply a voice, that is gonna be replaced by the real actor later. But if you're good and the, the creator likes your performance, they might try to keep you in the production. So that happened with me on El Tigre, The Adventures of Manny Rivera, created by Jorge Gutierrez and Sandra Akiwa, his wife, for Nickelodeon. And for that, I was doing a, an impression of Ricardo Montalbon from Fantasy Island. I was doing the rich Corinthian leather voice, uh, you know, not too dissimilar from Antonio Banderas, push and boots. Yeah, so I was doing like this Mexican wrestling father and he loved it so much that they kept me in. And that's how I got my, my foot in the door at Nickelodeon. What are you most proud of? What character that you've done are you most proud of? 
Oh, there's been so many great characters that I've gotten to play over the years, but... Uh, uh, but really, I gotta say Bugs Bunny, Doc, because uh, every time I do this voice, uh, people smile like you, and they laugh. Because it's another character that I grew up watching, and he was my favorite of all the cartoon characters. I think a lot of people grow up on one side of the fence if you're a Disney or if you're a Warner Brothers. So I, I grew up on the Warner Brothers side of the fence for sure. I love Mickey Mouse, but uh, Bugs Bunny is my, my hero. Yeah, the, 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 that's all, folks. <laughs> you know, I can't help it. Uh, yeah, I, I, again, it's, it's just one of those things that I, 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 I probably thought I could do as a kid. Probably didn't sound great, but as I got older, I just kept practicing. Not even thinking that I would have that opportunity because even in the last 12 years that I've been working, because I've, I've voiced Marvin the Martian as well. Yeah. Probably the longest character that I've voiced out of all the Looney Tunes over, over 10 years. Mm -hmm. But in 10 years, I've only auditioned for Bugs Bunny twice, which shows you how often they change, they change yeah. right? Because yeah. they want to stay consistent. And the only reason why they would change is because the story changes. The focus of the story, how, how they want to depict this character right. is so drastic from the last time mm -hmm. than the audition. What you do, you're a voice actor. Yes. You can do different characters. Yes. You've done Bugs Bunny, Marvin the Martian, Tweety. Woody Woodpecker. Uh, I did Fozzie Bear for Muppet Babies. Uh, you know, and those are just like the well-known iconic characters. And there's been some original characters as well, uh, like their um, Cartoon Network, uh, Uncle Grandpa, the show Uncle Grandpa. There was Breadwinners for Nickelodeon, Fairly Odd Parents. So, yeah, I've been able to um, work on a lot of original stuff as well as iconic characters that I grew up watching. It's, so maybe I should change yeah. my question to what haven't you done? Oh, oh, but, okay, well, uh, Batman. I haven't really, I haven't voiced Batman yet. Do you have a voice for Batman? You know, I, I, that's why it's like, it's, usually it's like a natural voice and I don't hear myself coming out of that, uh, that character, yeah. I wouldn't trust him. Uh, but playing all the bad guys, I've played, uh, I've played Two-Face before. I've also supplied the voice for the Penguin before. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think, I think Batman is one of those things where I, I, I'm okay if I don't get to play it, but it would be fun if they made a version that was, you know. It would be cool. A little, yeah. yeah. Maybe if they had a Filipino Batman. Right. Let him have a mustache. <laughs> so you're a voice actor. Yes. And this is different from being an actor. It, it, in a way, yes. Yes and no, because at the end of the day, it still comes down to good acting. Even if you're playing a cartoon rabbit, mm -hmm. you still have to feel for this rabbit. You still have to believe that this, you know, this situation is happening, even though it's animated. So uh, that's what a lot of people think, right? They, you know, they think cartoons and they, they think it's, ah, it's just cartoons. It's not serious. But, you know, like there are still like a lot of dramatic cartoons out there like Tresse mm -hmm. or like, you know, Batman when they do a uh, home video. It's, it's very... Um, Invested. Yes, and it, it almost rivals uh, the live action productions of like superhero movies. Some people would prefer the animated one over the live action, just because there's just this, there is the suspension of disbelief, but mm -hmm. but the acting is so good in, in a lot of those productions. And maybe it's a little bit more demanding too, because with the voice acting, you just have your voice to Con convey, convey a the feeling emotions. and emotion. Yeah. Whereas with Live acting, you have your facial expressions of yeah. everything. Yeah, right? you have you have the ability to, you know, convey emotions without even saying words on camera. Right. But with uh, voiceover, you know, it's it's this weird walking the tightrope of not going too far. You have to go further than you would on camera mm -hmm. because you don't have your face or your right. body, right. you know, to to convey uh, actions and emotions. You only have your voice. Right. But uh, it's, it's a fine line between going too far and just enough. Right. Uh, and that's why you have the good voice directors out there. Because going too far is just overacting. It gets wacky, you know. <laughs> right. then, then, then maybe you can work on Looney Tunes. But, uh, <laughs> but, you know, for the more dramatic stuff, that especially, you really need, like, a good uh, uh, background in, in acting. Right. 
Tweety, Tweety leaves the United States to go to the Canary Islands. <laughs> Being king is the greatest! And find out if he has royalty in his, in his roots. In and, the movie, oh wow. Yeah, and he so takes on the throne. It's kind of like me. Yeah, yeah. also my face, kind of like me too. You were born in Mason. Toronto, Ontario, Canada, correct. Right. It must have been hard. Like, you know, you were already established in Canada, but you chose to move here yeah. for work. It's tough, because I feel like there are lots of people out there that have the same story. They, even if you move from New York to LA, it feels like you're moving from a different, you know, you're, you're coming in from a different time zone. It's like a different, two different worlds, right? You're starting over, you're, you're having to make friends and you're having to prove yourself again, leaving a place where you may have already been established, leaving family behind, which is always hard. But, you know, these new friends uh, become your family. I, I, I lucked out. I have, uh, you know, uh, an uncle out here, my mom's brother, who also encouraged me to come out here because he left the Philippines, went to Canada, left Canada, went to Los Angeles. And I think that's our, our nature, right? Filipinos, we're kind of very humble and shy. And we don't want to bother anyone. Uh, we don't want to put anyone out. For whatever reason, I have, again, lucked out with finding so many people who trust me and they want to see me go far, they want to see me succeed. Not just my talent or my luck, but there are people that just have, by the, their good grace, gave me the chance to be a part of their story. There's always a, a hurdle or a struggle or, or an obstacle that you'll have to face uh, every now and then. But at the end of the day, it, it, it's worth it. For me, like, it, I, again, I lucked out. Some people aren't so lucky. Some people try and they come here and maybe they get the visa right away, but they don't get the work, right? I was lucky to have both at this, like, work out one after the other. And I, you know, knock on wood, uh, it'll continue that way uh, until, I, until I get full citizenship. <laughs> You know, I just hope I stay relevant to these these new kids that are watching right now. <laughs> With that said, how do you take care of your voice? Oh, I don't. I drink like lattes all the time. And <laughs> resting your voice is something that you can do. Uh, I know uh, from rumor has it, Celine Dion, she doesn't talk on Sundays. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> the whole day. Let's talk about representation because I know that now there is a push for like people wanting to see people that look like them on TV, but not necessarily, that doesn't necessarily translate to voice actors. That was the, the special part about being in voiceover is that you, it didn't matter what you looked like, right? Uh, it didn't matter if you were too tall or too short, too wide or too thin, too Filipino, not Filipino enough. You could be handsome or beautiful and be on camera and that, that is like just enough. But if, if you are behind the microphone and you cannot emote or act, then they're gonna find someone new, you know? So I say, study the classic, study cartoons, and, but more importantly, really sharpen your skills as a, as a good actor or actress. What's on the horizon for you? You know, a lot of people have asked if I have ideas for my own show, and I feel like I may go back to the drawing board and start drawing again. And uh, it, it would be very interesting to uh, try to make my own series, or my own show, uh, and uh, maybe do voices on my own show. It would be easy, because uh, <laughs> I know the creator. <laughs> you are getting a lot of love from Filipinos like all over the world. We're very proud. It's been amazing, and I hope that if you do share the same face as me and you see some kind of inspiration there for you uh, as a voiceover artist specifically, go for it, you know? Like I say there's more room. I, I want there to be a, a million Bugs Bunnies out there, not just one. I want to share that experience with, you know, because I'm definitely not going to be the last person voicing this character. And by the looks of it, he's going to be here for many more years to come. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited and proud to push these characters forward with the time that I have with them. But I'm also hoping to see the next. Pass the baton. Yes, I'm all about that. I, uh, I did Porky Pig's voice once in Space Jam. Uh, but I'm not a, 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 a pig in real life. I, I want to share, you know, like I, I want people to have that experience. 
thank you so much and God may God continue to bless you on your journey and we'll be here to support you all the way. Eh, salamat po. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Love it. Cool.